let's move on to the next topic as we are running out of time. Uh, it's a panel discussion, preparing teachers for digital natives, professional development for technology integration in schools. For this, I would like to call upon Mrs. Sunanda Sandhir. Mrs. Sunanda Sandhir is an educationalist with over 20, 20 sec, 22 years of experience in premier Indian and international schools like ELC International, Kuala Lumpur, GD Goenka, Wall School, Gurgaon, Vidya Sanskar International School, Faridabad, Bharato Common School, Delhi Can, to name a few, in education and school administration. She is the principal of middle section at Pathway School, Noida, for past four years. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Sunanda Sandeer. And we have Mrs. Sangeeta Gulati. Ms. Sangeeta Gulati is an academic coordinator and head of mathematics department at Sanskriti School in New Delhi. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Sangeeta Gulati. And we have Mrs. Trip, Mrs. Kriti Tripathi, head curriculum development and technology integration, Amity International Schools. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Kriti Tripathi. And we have our moderator, Binakshi Oberoi. She is an education evangelist and founding director of Pedagogical. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Minakshi Oberoi. Very good afternoon, everyone. Are you with me? Can I have a show of hand if you're with me, please? A show of hand if you're with me. Thank you. Normally, what I do with my students would be a show of hand, one hand up. May I have a hand up, please? Another hand up and cross your arms. But right, you're not students, you miss it as you want to. So it's all right. Uh, I don't think we have more, much to cover because so much has been said since morning. Just a minute. Uh, with due respect to everything that's been covered, we would go and dwell into an area which is yet to be explored. That's professional development. Who's going to train? So who's going to tell me? Uh, what to train, whom to train, what are the policies, what is it that schools should do or shouldn't do. Uh, with that, I'll put forward my first question to the panel. What is your reason for integrating technology? Why should you have technology integrated into your curriculum? One of the, I think, questions that was asked this morning was this. Anybody who would like to take it. For me, it's uh, personalized learning experiences because the advent of uh, data analytics, which is uh, creating a lot of learning spaces and uh, helps in doing the personalized learning space and differential learning. So for me, I think that's the first thing which I would like to put across. This is a different generation today. The students are students who are born today uh, are born with uh, mobiles, iPads all around them. They understand that as their tools of learning. They go in the car, they ask questions, they can get answers on their tools. So I think if I look at the students today, it is very essential. I will, I, I have gone above the word thinking in integrating technology. I think it is a tool which our students have to use and our teachers have to learn because unfortunately, they were not born in those times. I was not born at that time when these tools were available. Absolutely. So that's why it becomes essential. Wonderful. Thank you. I have been a teacher for 25 years. And for first good half of my teaching career, uh, the tool that I used was chalk and board. But that was the technology at that time. But now with the technology coming in our lives all across, uh, there is no reason why I should not use technology in my classroom. So I've seen a great difference being made. Uh, I think I think I am a better teacher by, uh, with technology by my side. So I see all the more reason to integrate technology, just not have technology in my classroom. I think we had uh, introduced our panelists very, very modestly, but uh, here we have people who have achieved, I think, the best accreditations possible in technology. Uh, um, I think Sangeeta herself, Sangeeta, would you please tell them briefly about your ac accomplishments? They're so beautiful. Thank you so much, Minakshi. No, this, uh, I guess they can always look up our little resumes that have been put up. The only, um, I think uh, in this gathering, I think I would say that I'm happy that I'm here. I'm just a teacher. 
I'm not a principal of any school. I head maths department. But yes, uh, technology has been my passion for many years. And that has taken me very far. I, it's really been a, a great friend in all these years. So as Minakshi said, there have been a number of opportunities that are opening up for teachers. And I have tried to grab each one of them. So and um, the, the, I think what you are possibly referring to as a technology would be the Google certified teacher. Yes, I am one of the 50 uh, teachers that were identified and recognized as Google certified teachers. I also did an action research uh, as a Fulbright Distinguished Award uh, alumni where I could work with understanding how technology can be integrated in teaching and learning of maths. Absolutely. The only point that I was trying to put across is it's before we begin the issue of professional development being offered by the schools. Here we have people who have gone about all by themselves and also in the audience we have people who have accomplished Mamta. Narula is a Microsoft expert here. So we have people who have taken upon themselves learning as their task and gone ahead and not waiting for professional development formally to happen in schools. But on that note, the research shows and we continuously hear the couple of days of in-service does not bring the required change in the institution, but the process has to be of continuous improvement is required. Uh, Kirti, how do you suggest that this is available in the busy schedules that we run? Thank you for the question. Um, you know, uh, obviously, since we are living in an age where change is growing, it is happening exponentially, and so the need of uh, students are changing day by day. So it is very important for us, we as educator, to adopt the change and be with the change. Uh, professional development is one very, very important aspect in the, this arena. So, uh, you know, we cannot look professional development in isolation. It has to be, I mean, for me, it has to be seamlessly integrated into day-to-day -day curriculum, day-to-day -day activities of the school. So um, to do so, we have to really devise certain strategies, maybe something like, um, of course, time constraint is one of the major deterrent in this area, but uh, strategies like uh, one day PD in a month can be one of the very good strategy where you can have uh, teachers meeting together and uh, you know, planning out their lessons, integrated, uh, you know, integrational technology can be uh, discussed with them. Similarly, uh, we can have uh, something like a smaller, lesser, smaller core group uh, mentoring system can be adopted, where uh, you know we can have a mentor, and she has got a smaller group, and all four, five, or six people in a group are being given a smaller time slot, uh, you know, in a week per day, you know. One day in a week can be made free so that they can discuss in a smaller group and adopt the new practices. So, uh, you know, these are the things which I feel as a teacher, they were, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, due to the lack of support, teachers felt that they are unable to adopt to the technology. So if we provide right kind of a support, right kind of a strategies, things are going to be falling in place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. But uh, building a sustainable professional development program is also preparing the stakeholders, the administrators, ensuring that the administrators are deeply immersed and dedicated to the school's professional development program. Um, that is the key for effectiveness and sustainability of the program, at least. Uh, I'm sure Sunanda would be the best person to shed some light on this. Uh, OK, I agree that professional development programs and what I believe, as it was said by our previous speaker here, that uh, one, the professional development programs of keeping teachers and getting them ready and teaching them and uh, you know, standing in front, lecturing them and getting them, uh, is not, it will not help us to sustain. They have to be a part of the program. Setting up a culture of learning in the school is absolutely essential for uh, any professional development program. Uh, so while in our school at Pathways, we do have, uh, we are very regular and there's a whole budget uh, which is allocated to uh, professional development of teachers. We have created a learning environment. Every Thursday, the students are sent early and the teachers stay back on th at 2.30 where they get together and discuss various issues. There are teachers who will take professional development for each other. We are getting into professional learning communities where they can take in charge, they can take responsibility of their own learning. 
then only you can have these kind of programs which are sustainable. You have to create that environment of learning. Uh, it's self-learning is important. There's no point if there's a person who comes here and learn, uh, teaches, does a professional development course for a day. I, I don't think teachers are able to learn that way. It's, right, that they have to be trigger. Yes. Yeah, right. That could only actually trigger learning. That could only create a starting point. She can only act as a catalyst. The rest is up to the teachers and the stakeholders. Uh, Ms. Sangeeta, how do you ensure that ongoing professional growth in technology, fluency and integration, uh, sorry, integration for yourself, students, as well as teachers? Uh, the technology changes very fast. And uh, any time I pick up a tool, I start using it. And if I don't keep up with what's happening in that particular field, uh, very soon uh, it would be possibly advanced so much that I won't know what I'm doing next time I put my hands on it. Uh, and the development or advancement would be possibly to make me better in using all of that. So in order to keep up all of that, again, technology comes to my help. So I uh, follow blogs uh, of many great educators. I uh, am on Twitter, but as uh, mostly as a consumer, because there's so much information that comes along that way. And uh, I also have a must try, must do list, which keeps growing, which uh, where I keep adding that I must follow up this and see how I'm going to use it in my classroom. And uh, I share that with all my colleagues, and I do also conduct workshops for teachers as and when I get an opportunity and share my learning so that if I have got something which I feel is strong enough for uh, to be used in a classroom then others must benefit as well from there. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Kirti, how in your opinion should uh, the leaders model or promote the frequent and effective use of technology in learning? Okay, uh, first thing I will say that there has to be a good organizational culture which is pro-technology. I mean, that's very, very important, I feel, because, uh, you know, the flow of technology integration should follow right from the top till bottom into the hierarchy. If, if you know, we are thinking only teachers are going to use technology and other people are just going to be stay away from it, it is not going to be of much help. A leader has to lead by an example. So there has to be a good mix of uh, usage of technology in, in administrative as well as in day-to-day -day activity along with teaching learning process. So that's very, very important aspect which I feel. Secondly, a good network, because uh, you can say a support network, which is very important, be in terms of um, you know, solving the tech-related problems, maybe a kind of administrative problems. So a good support network is very important. Thirdly, we need to encourage teachers, because see, we are not in that generation where uh, technology is uh, that often used. We are not belonging to that kind of a generation. So we need to promote the usage of technology by uh, in, uh, giving some incentive associated with it. Maybe a teacher who's using it, we should promote her usage. Uh, so I think these are the three important aspects which I feel are uh, going to create a strong organizational culture. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes, uh, help desk is absolutely important because I know the moment you have a glitches, you just put away your laptop and you move on. So, so Mr. Nanda, if uh, we create a new uh, professional learning community to focus on serious implementation of 21st century skills that we've been talking about since morning, what or how would it look like? It's very interesting that this year only we have uh, opened our school to professional learning communities. We've already teacher this uh, this was one of our goals for this year for our teachers to create professional learning communities for ourselves uh, in our school. So first, most thing I must tell you that for an effective professional learning community, it's very important to have a lot of collaboration in the school among the teachers. And when I say collaboration, it's not co cooperation, but collaboration, trusting each other. And that's where the role of a leader is very essential. Because we have to create an environment of not competitiveness, which I, I liked what uh, Sangeeta had said, sharing and learning from each other. So that environment can, that culture can only be set by our, us as, uh, as leaders over here. And once that environment uh, is created, the learning to grow and learn from each other happens. So that kind of professional learning communities we are planning. What we have done is that we have uh, 
given out topics, and I'm not talking only about technology. Technology for me is a tool. It's about learning, about the changing mindsets, about the growth mindsets, about different strategies. And the teachers have to choose and come together. So we've just begun this year. And they have to, uh, we have laid down a structure where they will choose. And then once they get into their professional learning com communities, they will set a goal. They will share their goals with us. And then we'll see how it moves on. Time but basically, a goal is very important to set their targets when you set professional learning communities is essential. Thank I you. think what you've just put forward is pretty doable. Um, what, according to you, Sangeeta, is the most important parameter that is needed for teachers training who are terrorized by technology? Uh, how can we motivate those teachers into bringing transformation in their classrooms, people who, who are, are technologies and no no to those people? Yeah, I guess uh, just like we have students of different abilities in our class, we have teachers also of different abilities. They have their strengths. So technology may not be their strength. And that is exactly why they are a little uh, scared of uh, adapting it. Uh, but at the same time, if these same teachers are given time uh, and uh, are maybe uh, motivated to take some baby steps to start off, that goes a long way. But I've also found if they see uh, or uh, maybe attend a session where a success story is being shared, and they see that it has made a difference, then they do get encouraged and they want to learn and take it forward as well. Yes. So that has definitely made a difference. Therefore, the need of celebrating good practices and sharing them. Sure, sure. Yeah. All right. So what are the different pedagogies uh, made possible only with the use of technology? Could, uh, Kriti, could you please share some of those if you can? Yeah, I will share some of my experiences. Uh, I am in the forum of technology integration only. So uh, we have incorporated at Amity, we've incorporated certain practices like flipped lessons. We have incorporated project-based learning. We did um, something, some kind of uh, experimental learning also. So uh, these are the areas which uh, obviously these uh, things can only be uh, possible with technology intervention. Uh, I mean to say if you are looking into flipped uh, classroom situation, obviously you have to uh, deliver the content uh, away, from the away from the classroom. So you require some platform where you can uh, share the video-based lessons with the students. And the classroom is uh, free for other kind of a usage where teacher is only doing problem solving with the uh, students. Likewise, project-based learning also, uh, since it offers project-based requires a lot of collaboration and research. So obviously, a lot of technology integration is required over there. Uh, we've used uh, a web questing platform to provide uh, you know, a description of a project so that a complete uh, modeling of a project is being showcased to the student prior to the attempt. So uh, obviously, these things are not possible other way around without the intervention of technology. So these are the two things which I would like to add on. One last question before I wind up this session, which I think rides on everyone's mind. Which are the great programs other school leaders or teachers should join, which can provide them with professional development and training uh, they had for new instructional leadership roles for this digital age? Uh, coming from a person who's leading in this industry, I'm going to put this forward to you. So let me put it as, apart from their pedagogics, where should they go? Okay. Uh, there are, uh, in fact, you know, as I tell my young colleagues uh, that this is the best time to be a teacher. Because uh, earlier we used to always wait for those last uh, end of the session training programs or the beginning of the session training programs. And then by the end of those three days of professional development program, uh, one possibly couldn't even recollect the theme of what one was attending. Uh, uh, but now this professional development that can happen at your own time, in your own suite, home, at, at your own comfort. And there are a whole lot of MOOCs that are coming along. Uh, Google is uh, in action in India in a big way. So uh, they're supporting teachers. At the same time, it's a global program. One can go and uh, look in for a lot of certifications that are uh, available now, different level of certifications. At the same time, one can join a course uh, through Coursera or any other platform and learn a lot 
uh, which uh, would make one, um, or uh, in fact, most of the teachers empower themselves with the strategies, not only the tools, the pedagogies, which they can then uh, blend with their existing uh, methodologies and become a stronger teacher. So one doesn't have to zero down to a specific goal. You can follow a lot of uh, videos that are teaching you exactly how to use a tool. And then you can also attend the courses which will also talk about the pedagogy behind those tools. So a blend of the two would go a long way. Perfect. I'll add on, I think, Twitter, if I say. Uh, we've got this Twitter on our school and we've got this WhatsApp group of our teachers where they tweet each other any link that they see. Twitter is, uh, uh, for me, I find it is a great tool of self-learning again. Uh, there are so many resources up there and the kind of sharing the teachers across the world, they do. It's a, it's a great learning tool for teachers if they want to self-learn uh, and try out and experiment with different pedagogies. Uh, okay, here I would like to appreciate the role of EdTech Review. We must appreciate their role because they are giving us a great platform to uh, interact, you know, in person. We, uh, both of them have spoken about online training mode. But uh, we need such forums where uh, in-person interaction is very, very important and EdTech Review is doing a great job. Uh, and um, they are, obviously they are giving lots of uh, feeders, you know, uh, they keep giving uh, about the new changes, new technologies, keep following their uh, main uh, course, I mean, keep following their reviews on LinkedIn, you will get to understand new technologies. And um, I believe LinkedIn is also a very good uh, place where you can, uh, you know, create uh, PLN, I mean professional learning groups, okay, uh, like-minded people can create uh, their own groups and interact with each other. Thank you. And of course you have blogs of many, many educators to follow. And uh, I think 90% laptops when we open up, the first thing that pops up in front of you is a Windows screen. So let's give Microsoft also its credit and its due. There are there are so many things available from Microsoft, Apple, or um, um, Google, for that matter, that it's, it's actually take your pick. Just don't wait. Take your pick. Any of that, if you would like to discuss anything about Microsoft further, you can get in touch with us. We are their professional partners, for that matter. So well, after today's discussion, it's pretty apparent that what we need is a well-planned ongoing professional development program that is tied to the school's curriculum goals designed with well-built-in evaluations and sustained by adequate financial and staff support is essential. If the teachers are to use technology appropriately to promote learning for all students in the classroom, and I think all of us here appreciate the need, therefore we are in this room. I would like to uh, stop here, and before that, I'd like to thank all of you for your attention, patience, and any questions. The forum is now open to any questions that you would like to ask. Please ask, at least one. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah between the schools, so, so that it is a school-to-school -school collaboration as well. So because that, that is also what we are trying to achieve uh, as well. So I just wanted your thoughts so that because you, you, you would know better from a school leader's point of view. Definitely. I mean, that would be great. But uh, that would ob obviously be great. We can have a platform where we, and we do have it in uh, our school for, we have something called job descriptions. And we have something called uh, job alike, where uh, teachers from different schools, but of course, uh, these are basically all the IB schools uh, where we network. And one can do it in, uh, with Indian schools also, or it can be a common uh, conceptual that, uh, you know, those schools who around who are integrating and they can share with each other and learn from each other. So we have something like job alike, where the teachers from different schools come together, they share their experiences, and then they learn from each other. So there are things like that. And definitely, I mean, professional learning communities uh, within schools is a great idea. But as I said, collaboration and trust is essential, not competition. That is essential uh, theme for any PLC to happen. Very well, Thank Sananda. Thank you. Any other question here? Yes, please. Any other question? 
All right, between you and the tea break is only me, so I will stop talking here. And anyone who would like to discuss anything with the panelist or us, we are available at the tea time. Thank you very much. Ms. Sunanda Sandeep. Ms. Sangeeta Gulati. And Ms. Kirti Tripathi. And Ms. Minakshi. Thank you all the panelists for amazing session. Once again, I would like to thank our uh, principal partner, Net Messaging, and uh, associate partners uh, without whom this conference would not have been possible, Bonai, Bonio, Flint, Explorers, and Kidzania, and also our media partners, uh, the Progressive Teacher and the Curriculum Magazine. So let's end this conference by taking home many great ideas, and uh, let's discuss today's learning over the cup of tea and coffee and uh, maybe, maybe start the community building from today onwards. Thanks to all the delegates for taking out the time. Thank you. <laughs>